Hello. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hi, man. How are you? How are you? Okay, ready. Yes, Kim, waiting for you. Okay. Waiting for me. a new class today. Okay, good. Where were you in yeah, were you in class yesterday? Yes. Oh. Were were you in the class yesterday too? Yes. Okay, yeah, because I need to to remember some some names. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. Where where do you work, Ivan? I work in Central Center Center de Salud Integral. I am a teacher. So, I'm a teacher oh, or really? a computer uh, and sport training. IT IT teacher. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Information technology teacher. Good. Yes. That's yes, nice. Yes. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's very interesting actually, right? Because I think um like everything, right? You never stop learning. There is always, always something, something new to learn. All right. Yeah. So that's good. Nice. Okay. Hello, Wendy. How are you doing, Wendy? Wendy is still, still connecting. Okay. Hello, Oscar. Oscar of Dulio. How are you doing, Oscar? Good. No, it's not there yet. Hi, Julio Cesar. Teacher. Yes. How are you? I'm good, teacher. Okay, great. How was your day? Good. I can't I can't complain. I was uh, working a lot as usual. <laughs> teaching my classes, but um, no problem. It's just uh, normal things to do, normal activities, but great. Where do you work, uh, Julio? I work for the Minister of Health. Okay, good. Are you a doctor? Yeah, I am. Okay, so I don't, I'm don't. i not going to say anything about doctors. <laughs> <laughs> don't just, worry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, just kidding. Okay, good. That's nice. Okay, great. Uh, hello, Marlene. How are you doing? I'm fine, teacher. Okay, great. Home or still in the office? What? Are you at home or still in your office? I am in my home. Ah, okay, good. Where do you work, Marlene? I'm not working yet. Just wow. taking care for my son, for my children. Okay. Good. So, <laughs> okay, that's a. I mean, that's a good job. <laughs> yes. It has a lot I of really work. Tough. Yes. I really tough. Yeah, it's very tough, you know, teaching, teaching children and taking care of them, especially they are yes. your your children. Is it's nice but tiring, right? But it's good. Okay, okay. nice. Hi, Francisco. Hi, teacher. How are you? Good. Good evening. Nice. Good evening, sir. How was the day? Great. Okay, Great. good. Did you practice English? More or less. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's always good. Sometimes I know that in some cases for you is uh, maybe difficult, right, to practice yeah. your English during the day. <clears throat> In my case, it's different, right? Because I I spend teaching English all day, so I oh. have the chance, I have the opportunity, you know, to to practice every day and and most of the day. You know, I mm -hmm. teach almost like five hours in the morning in the school, you know, speaking English, and then I have to, and then in the in the afternoons, you know, sometimes I have meetings in Spanish, sometimes in English, 
Yeah. And then, you know, my classes in the evening. Okay. So then, uh, so that's why, you know, and that's, but that's the best way, you know, to keep your English alive and also yeah. to, to learn a little bit more about the language. Yeah. Okay. So this is, the, you know, that's the good thing about these platforms, right? Because, you know, besides learning a little bit, you also have the chance to practice because many times what we most need is to speak, right? To listen, speak, and, and you know, little by little, we can see the, the progress. Okay, very good. Then, uh, where is uh, Oscar? Oscar, I think he's... Uh, can you hear me, Oscar? Sure. Oh, uh, yes, now I can. How are you doing, good Oscar? Evening. Good evening. I'm fine. I'm fine. All right. Oh, this is still... Is is a is it right? Is it right to say good evening at this time? Yes, yes, at this time, yes. Uh, Actually, okay. uh, when you arrive, when you get to a place, is good evening, and when we finish, uh, when we finish the class, then we say good night. Okay, because oh, okay. good night is like goodbye. See you tomorrow, right? So oh. when we enter a house, if you go to a house in this moment, good evening. If you get to a house in the ten p.m good evening okay but uh if you leave the house at seven and you're not coming back to that place then you say okay see you tomorrow good night bye bye mm -hmm. okay so that's the correct form good you know, you know my problem about about the, the uh, english i mean the talking is for example let's say when when uh when i enroll to a course I, I can notice that I uh, um, I improve a little bit my, my talking part. Mm -hmm. But then when I, let's say, when I stop uh, practicing or, or thinking in English, let's say for uh, one or two or three days or a week, I feel very uncomfortable to talk in English. It's like, I hate that part. It's like, I, it's, it's like yeah, you need to be practicing forever. Less, every day is like, uh -huh. the, the same as you talk Spanish, but you know that this, in my case it's not possible. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. I mean, because I'm not a teacher, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh, exactly. I'm not teaching that uh, English, but it's it's like I hate that part. I I hate it because you know yeah. it's like I don't feel that I'm afraid. Sometimes I'm afraid to talk. I feel um uh, I don't feel self confidence to talk uh -huh, in English. Exactly. Because, uh, I don't have the the ideas that uh, or what or what uh, I want to say is like a very very uh, uncomfortable situation. It's like a struggling every wow. day with that part. <laughs> okay, you know? but you know, but what you're doing now is you know you're using a lot of uh, words correctly, so that's that's good. I mean, yeah, exactly. That's the what we need, right? That that push. You know, to push yourself and feel confident, not to be afraid. Yeah, I mean, remember that we are all practicing and this is what what we do every day, right? So this, we learn, if you want to learn how to drive, it's practice uh, bicycle, practice, okay? In every uh, profession, right? If I want to, for example, the, when I started teaching, if I wanted to be good, I had to practice a lot before teaching a class. I need to practice the topic, okay, to know what I'm talking about. And, you know, if, if you are a, an accountant, obviously you need to practice with numbers and prepare yourself in that field. So everything requires, you know, some preparation and practice. Obviously, at the beginning, you know, we usually feel kind of, uh, um, uh, like I said, uncomfortable, not so confident. By little, by little, no, that disappears. Okay, and that is the good thing about all this learning process. Okay, good. Now that I guess that we're going to get started because we have some activities to do. Yesterday, you know, we were talking about some a. Uh, uh, Time closes, right? And then when we talk about uh, time closes, it's because we are referring to things that need to be connected somehow to the future, to the past. It depends on the 
on the topic, right? So when you say, for example, that I will phone you when I get home from work, that means that you are leaving your office and then I will phone you, I will call you, okay, but when I get home. So what I will let you know when I get home, I will uh, text you, okay, when I get home. So then you are letting a person know what you are going to do at the moment or by the time you get to a place. Okay. And then uh and then we're going to see the, the let me see the platform. Then we have Yeah, this one. Okay, yes, this is where we stopped yesterday, right? Well, actually, it was after a video. Uh, we watched the video about time closes. I'm just going to repeat the video because just to for you to refresh the last topic about yesterday, and then we do the exercises. Immature. Part A. Listen and really immature. And I'll find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog, but I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? Okay. So, yesterday, remember, we were uh, discussing uh, some different ways to... Uh, not different ways, no, probably different moments, right, in which... Uh, there was a turning point in our life. And this is probably, you know, even when we decided what we wanted to study, right, for for our future. So sometimes, it, you know, when we are little kids, we said, I want to be, usually we say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a pilot, okay, I want to be, a, I don't know, maybe a, an engineer, okay, but as time passes by, okay, we make up our mind, okay, and different ideas come up, right? And then is the turning point. For example, the uh, Julio Cesar, which is the event or moment in your life that you could say that is the turning point that really marked your life? I think 
your microphone is in mute. I think it's uh, when I, I finished at uh, the university and I had to to go to to do my practices out of out of my house out of, out of the the city. So that uh, really uh, it, it was really important for me because uh, it was the time to be independent. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and I have to live out of my house. That's okay, very good, mm -hmm. excellent. Okay, so then we start facing life in a different way, right? When this first experiences come. Okay, good. Okay, this is a general question. For example, do you people think that um a, the comfort zone a, is, for example, when we go out of our comfort comfort zone? Is it a turning point in our life? Yes, Giovanni? Why? Yeah, definitely. Because when we are probably inside of something that we are really, it's like the traditional, right? Because mm -hmm. we have the custom to do every single day or something like that. But something, it's like forcing us to, to go out to that way, we force to learn forced to to get new abilities and skills and sometimes it's like it's not a it's not an option <laughs> it's a necessity yes. to yes. grow and, and that's why you know and it's and it's difficult okay when when you realize it's kind of hard but you say well i have no option but the problem is when somebody else uh, else tells us right hey you know what you gotta do it you have no option. And then you feel like, like if someone is really you not know, kicking you out, right? Or or pushing you out of your comfort zone. And then probably sometimes we react in a more, uh, let's say, a passive aggressive way sometimes, right? But you know, turning points, okay? This is the moment when, when this happens. And then I say, until I met, until I knew, okay? I realized that, for example, until I, started teaching English, I realized uh, how nice uh, interacting with people was. Okay, so before that, you know, I, uh, okay, I, I had a lot of friends, I did this and I wanted to do many things, but once I started, once is another word, right? Like once after uh, enough, once I started uh, teaching, no, my 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 uh, my mind changed. So there was a different. The mindset came in, and then you know I started uh, enjoying right what I was doing. So I can really honestly tell you that sometimes I feel that I don't work during the week. I feel tired, you know, because I don't I don't feel that I work because you know when I am with the teenagers in the morning, you know I have fun with them right because sometimes uh, they made me you know go through a hard time because they don't want to study but you know then i i put myself in their feet and then say i used to be like that right and probably worst and then i try to you know to to connect with them and then we start we start doing different things uh obviously you know there is a moment that you have to put pressure on them right because it's not only life is not only about playing right you know life is also hard Okay, but you know, this is how you learn how to be creative, how to enjoy, so different ways to see life. Okay, now we're going to go and see some examples here. According to this, it says match the closest with the information, and then it says choose the best answer. So we have two, four, six, eight, and there are, so there is one, sentence for each chunk right chunk is a piece for example until i got really sick it's not a complete sentence right and then it's just a piece a chunk a close so that's why we had to see which one matches better 
with each sentence, right? Remember, by the time I was 15, remember? They said I, what was the sentence I showed you yesterday? I have learned how to get a lot better. I have learned how to take care of myself. Of myself? Okay. Good. Until I started working part-time, I have, I had never saved any money. Okay. Okay, now, that's fine, but uh, just please, I want you to, the important, well, everything is important in this sentence, but also pay attention to the time close. What is the time close? By the time. Okay, that is a time close because there is where we are marking what is the moment that we are referring to, okay? Say by the time I was 20, by the time I was 30, you can, you know, switch. You can switch these words. You can use other words. You can paraphrase. By the time I got home, okay, by the time I, I uh, like I said, I finished reading a book, by the time I uh, finished work, by the time I left home, and I say I had a eaten breakfast already. So you can, you know, paraphrase and create different sentences. So the time expression is by the time. In the other one is until, okay, until that moment. And the next one is the moment. Okay, if you say the moment, then you can also say the minute, the second. If, you know, if you want to go romantic, you can say uh, the second I, uh, I, for example, I got in touch with you, you know, I knew that you were going to be the person, the best person in my life. Okay, so the second or the second I, uh, for example, I realized that I was leading my life in the wrong way. You know, I stopped and I started thinking what was the best, uh, let's say, decision to take in that moment. Okay, so you can say the second, the moment, the minute. Okay, so this is the time, uh, the time close. Okay, what about number three? The moment I got my first paycheck. I began, I began to understand to the value of money. Okay, you know that? I don't remember what happened to my first paycheck. Well, I know what happened to half of it, right? I don't remember what happened to the other half. No, because uh, since the moment I started working, you know, half of my money went, I, since I was leaving home, it was for my mom. Okay, so the rest, you know, it was for me. So that's why I don't remember the, the other half. Okay, so then it says, I didn't, which one you told me? Again, please. Uh, I began to understand. Began to understand the value of money. Yes. Of money. Okay. Okay. The next one is as soon as. That's the time expression. As soon as I left home. I realized that wasn't a shy anymore. I realized, yes. Okay. Good. Once I started sharing an apartment, I learned how to get, I learned how to get along better with people. I learned how, no, I learned, I learned, I learned how to get along better with people. Okay. And that happens too, all the time. Six, after I began a relationship, so here the time expression is after. This is the close. I learned, I learned how, how to communicate better. better. I learned, I learned, I learned how to communicate better. Yes. Okay. Before, so the time close, before I travel abroad. I didn't, I didn't appreciate, appreciate it. my own country. Yeah. I didn't appreciate my own country. That's also true. Until I got really sick. I had to understand the importance of good health. 
Yes, I hadn't understood, okay, the importance of good health. Okay, now let's check. Okay, the first one is correct. Okay, so we have number seven as well, number six as well, number five as well, also number four, number three, two, number two is also correct, and the number one. Okay, so now you can click on send and then you have your your platform done. Okay, good. So then remember the expressions, right? By the time I am preparing a, let me see if I can show you this one. A material for this. I want to add some other examples. And I will share with you Okay, this one. Okay, so these are uh, very closest. So these are the words, right? That can uh, that you can use to introduce a time close, right? When, after, as, for example, as I grew up, as uh, as I started working, as uh, as my English was improving, I felt more confident when I when I had to speak. Okay, and then you can practice, you know, with every every time close, saying sentences, right? Or if you have some uh, minutes, you can even write. That would be even better. As long as, okay, as soon as, before, hardly, you know, hardly, I can hardly remember, okay, when I was three years old. I hardly or I barely remember when I was six years old. By the time that, directly, during the time that, immediately after, the moment that, now that, once, since, until or till, which is similar, when, whenever, and why. Okay, so then um, that's what I'm preparing right now so that we can, because I saw that there were very few here, and then there are some examples. Okay, that you can, and also the use of coma. Okay, this is uh, when you write, right? When you say, I felt very tired when I got up this morning. Okay, but when you switch and you have the time close before the beginning, after he got a new job, then we have a comma to separate the two closes. And they say he changed completely. After he got a new job, he uh, started to progress, okay? Uh, after he got a new job, he bought a house for his mom, for his mother, or for his family, okay? And then if you see when the time closes the second, there is no comma. When the time closes at the beginning, then we separate it with a comma, okay? Easy to remember, but it's better when we practice it, okay? So you'll have this material tomorrow, okay, so that you can review it, right, little by little and practice more. Everyone, let me see here.
Okay. Now here we have a listening exercise. Uh, it reads instructions, listen to three people, describe important events in their lives, choose what was their turning point for each. Uh, let me see, I think we had to open it. Or oh, once it's gonna let me play it from here. Page 74. Exercise 4. Listening. Important events. Part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. 1. Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language. Yet, I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. Two, Henry. I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school. And I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me. And I became a lot more outgoing after that. Page 74. Exercise 4. Part B. Listen again. What do these three people have in common? Okay. This is their one, you know, what they have in common. But let's first see the first three, okay? So what was the turning point for Sally? She learned Spanish. To learn another language, right? She learned Spanish, yes. And for Henry? He and his brother yeah. went to different college. Okay, yes, decided to take separate ways. Okay, good. And Debbie? She, she, she was the top the student in her class. class. Okay, she was really surprised, right? You know, when 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 the deans the dean announced that. Well, I think they'll this one we can play it from here now. One, Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. Mm -hmm. I was always oh, kind yes, of scared of learning a foreign language. It's going to Yet repeat it. I was really envious of kids who could speak. We didn't need it. Now we're going to play the second. Here we go. Page 
Page 74. Exercise 4. Listening. Important events. Part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. 1. Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. Two, Henry. I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school, and I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know? I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me, and I became a lot more outgoing after that. Okay. Page 74. Exercise 4. Part B. Listen again. Well, I don't think we need to listen a second time, okay? All right, so what was the case of Sally? How did she feel, you know, after, you know, learning another language? Feel proud of. She felt proud of herself, she right? Proud of. Yeah. What about Henry? He became, became more confident. confident, and more confident independent. And independent. Yes, he became more confident and independent by going to the university or college by himself. Sure. Yes. Yes. Who, who yes. needs to speak? Okay, and the number three, Devi. Become become a little more outgoing. A little more outgoing. She became a lot more outgoing, right? But you know, she also found out that you know that more boys were you know paying attention to her. Okay, so that's where some things that make her you know become a little more outgoing. Obviously, self confident. Now we can check the answers. Became um, outgoing, became more confident, uh, felt proud. She was the top student of her class. He and his brother went to different college and she learned Spanish. Okay, good. No questions so far? Okay, if you have questions, remember that I'm you can- sorry. I had a question, but uh, uh, I had some issues with my microphone. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, what did she mean when she mentioned that she was capable to reach truth? She was and capable? Uh-huh. Do you hear that part? And I don't remember exactly, but it, when you say, for example, I am capable of is that you can do something. Yep. Now, uh, for example, when I say... Uh, uh, you know that, uh, let me see. Okay, when I started teaching, I many, many years ago, I 
I started teaching mm -hmm. with basic levels. Okay. I that at that moment I didn't know I was capable of teaching higher levels. Okay, until I realized that I could teach them. So capable of is means that I have the capacity to do more things, right? Than I think I can. Okay. In a basic way, you will probably say, uh, now I know that I can do this, that I can do that. All right. Yes, Giovanni. Yeah, only one one that in addition we're able to say it able to. It's able to it's, that's correct. It's a synonym. Uh-huh. Actually, uh, now that you mentioned that, remember that you have can is present, could is the past. In the future, you have, I will be able to. Okay, so that would be, I am capable of. Okay, so those are the meanings. Thank you, Giovanni, too. All right. Is that okay, Oscar? Or, or I mean, basically, that was... what I, basically, what I wanted to notice that uh, the part right after capable that huh. she said okay. I was capable to reach through. I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I'm to finish, to okay. Out. To reach through is to finish. That, huh? To to reach through is to finish. Okay, but let me see. We have that was okay. Let's listen a little bit. No, it won't let me do it now. So I have to play it back from here. Yeah, when you say, for example, to. To go through is to finish something. Page 74. We go through life. Exercise 4. Listening. Important events. Part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. 1. Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know. When at the moment I reached that breakthrough, the stage is the moment that you open your when when you let's say when you uh, how can I show, defeat when you defeat your fears okay oh. this is when you break through and then you come out as a confident person okay if you see that she was kind of uh, somehow you know uh, shy probably insecure about herself but then she was envious of uh, what other kids could do but then she realized that she was also page able 74 to do it. exercise 4 listening important events part a listen to three people describe important events in their lives complete the chart 1 sally one thing that was really a turning point for me was when i learned spanish I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And you say I was actually pretty good at languages. At the age. moment I reached that breakthrough stage. And in the moment that I reached that breakthrough stage, Okay, the stage is, you know, like that. Uh, for example, I am in the stage of my life, okay, that I have to start thinking about uh, probably, I don't know, my retirement probably. Okay, when we are maybe 20, you are the stage of your life of beginning to work and think about, you know, growing as a person and professionally. Maybe when you are 30 something, then you are in the stage that if you if you want to have a family, you know, that's the stage to get married. Okay. And th this is relative, right? In this moment, for example, if this is your stage right now, you are in the pre-advanced level of English. So this is the stage in which you decide if you want to continue 
and break through to learn a lot more English or stop because you say, okay, now this is becoming more difficult. It requires more time. And in this moment, I don't have enough time to uh, continue with the studies. I will probably continue later. Okay, so that is the stage, the moment. Oh, stop. Okay. Was that the, the, the sentence, uh, Oscar? Oh, correct. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good. Good, good. Now we have the next one. Okay, this is the same, right? <clears throat> in this uh, class, participants will learn adjectives for discussing behavior and personality. I think uh, we're gonna have some time to yeah, practice a little bit. Let me see this moment. It's not loading. We're about to study some adjectives which will help you talk about behavior and personality. Ambitious, argumentative, carefree, conscientious, naive, pragmatic, rebellious, sensible, sophisticated, argumentative, carefree, conscientious, personality, ambitious, argumentative, carefree, conscientious, naive, pragmatic, rebellious, sensible, sophisticated. Okay. Any Can questions? Can you tell us how you behaved in your teens, in your 20s? How do you behave now? Try to be as honest as possible. How do you, how do you use the, uh, the pragmatic adjective in, in a sentence? Somebody that is probably, you know, Can you practical, tell us how you behaved right? in your teens, Pragmatic in your 20s? How do you behave now? A person that go for practical things, they don't like to complicate too much themselves, oh. right? Mm -hmm. Well, ambitious has a, depend the connotation. Sometimes ambitious can be good, right? A, if you want to get whatever you want to get in your life if it is uh, a lot better what of what we already have that is an ambition that we have okay maybe the what the what happens is that sometimes depends on how we want to get it right but if we get with a lot of effort what we want so the ambition is good okay it's always be always good to be ambitious if you want to be the boss in your office it's okay Okay, as long as you don't do anything, as we don't do anything dishonest, right? Argumentative is a person that is always, you know, having an argument to, to talk about something, to discuss, and all that. A carefree, what is something that probably, you know, that, I mean, you are kind of relaxed, right? So then it's not a really you're careless, but, you know, you're not going to really take it with intensity. Conscientious is to be conscious, to be aware, okay, what it is happening around us, okay, to be aware, to be conscious. Naive is a person who is uh, very shy, innocent, right? Uh, for example, a person that anybody can fool, 
Okay, if they tell you, okay, tomorrow is there is going to be an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, tomorrow is going to be an earthquake, and you believe that, right? And then uh, there are people that, in that sense, they are very innocent, right? So that's that naive person, okay? That easy to fool, okay? It's an easy person to fool. Pragmatic is a person who's not complicated. Rebellious, <laughs> okay, a person that I think we all have a little bit of this, right? You know, that when sometimes we become a little rebel, okay, that we don't have to... We don't want to follow certain rules. Everything sometimes is good, sometimes is bad. It depends. Okay. Sensible, a person that has feelings, okay, about something and they really uh, feel hurt. For example, that if you see that they are uh, hitting a dog or mistreating an animal, and then there are people that ah, it's an animal, they don't care. But there are some other people that are more sensible about this, okay? And sophisticated, right? Something that has to be, I mean, it's kind of a delicate, exclusive, right? So then elegant also is very sophisticated. English, for example, the British English in the aristocracy is very sophisticated, right? They say, you know, good evening, sir. How are you today? So they speak, you know, with that way, very, very fancy, right? Okay. So then uh, I would give you, let me see, I think we have. Okay. What time is it? 43. I'm going to give you exactly 10 minutes. Well, eight minutes, more or less. Uh, to... to think about some sentences. So we have this. I'm going to create, let me see how many people we have, 22. Six, there would be three, no, seven maybe, <clears throat> more or less three people in each, in each uh, group, in each room, okay, we're going to have the, the, to practice, and then please ask questions Okay, for example, uh, well, no, don't ask questions. Tell what or how you were or what made you change when you were younger, right? For example, you say, when I was younger, I was very argumentative. Okay, that's one sentence. Uh, when I was uh, a, probably when I was seven years old, me, I was very naive, right? So if you told me that this was gold, I would believe, oh, that's gold, it's very expensive. I believed many things, right? So then, uh, for example, use, and you can use other um, other adjectives, not only this, right? Personality adjectives, for example, uh, I used to be very, uh, for example, um, a, let's say, angry, right? I used to be hot-headed, you know, also. I used to be also stubborn, okay, when I was a teenager, okay? So you can use different adjectives. Just say sentences to your partners, okay, about this. And I will visit your, your rooms, okay, your breakout rooms while you are speaking. Okay, you continue just describing yourself to your partners. So here we go. One, two, three. Victor, I have a, cute, a really quick question, and it's regarding to the teams. Mm -hmm. Is there a way in English to say trios? Because I know that when we are working in pairs, it's like couple, right? Uh -huh. in, threes, in threes or threes. trios? You can say you, the, let's say in trios or in threes, in okay, groups of wonderful. three. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Okay, were you able to look in? No, Wendy. No, Wendy, you couldn't access to it. Okay, try it. Okay, Ms. Eduardo, you too. Alone, I feel alone with with her. And for that reason, uh, I was rebellious with all my family. Uh, was a uh, uh, I don't remember the situation. Was hard for me. Very very hard for me. Okay, that's all. You, Catherine, Carla. Yes. <laughs> and when we were, when you were, um, Fifteen, you were um, rebellious. Mm. Oh, <laughs> how many? How many? And, uh, do you if have? You were, uh... If you were rebellious, <laughs> no more. Were you were you, re, were, you were you rebel? Huh? No. Sara, Sara, Sara is ready. <laughs> Fifteen years. Uh, oh really? That. Is it yes. true, Sara? Huh? No. 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 <laughs> I guess I guess I guess you were. Carla, no, Carla was very rebellious. I can see that. Uh, when I was a child. <laughs> 
now she now she looks very 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 calm right very relaxed now yes yes okay do you, or do you have a bad temper yes yes <laughs> no nah, i don't think so okay good <laughs> continue practicing okay good thank you all right Okay, how was it? Good. Hello, teacher. Who... Hi. Hi, Jose. Hi. Who was the rebellious here? <laughs> Nobody. I I am create of the sentence of teacher. Oh really? Yes. Why? Um... Hi, um, I'm I'm Joel. Oh, right. Uh, I didn't pay attention in the in the class. Well, the last thirty minutes at least, uh -huh. because I was on a an impartial of my of my university. Okay. I'm doing. I'm still doing the questions. Okay. Well, just write sentences and then you tell you know describe yourself. Okay. When I was uh, in the school, I was very ambitious. Oh, I was very naive. I was very shy. Okay, you can use different uh, expressions, right? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Uno de los que vos querás. Ah, okay, okay. ¿Qué es lo que nos hizo cambiar? Correcto. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, also what... A description of yourself, right? Like, for example, uh, when I was uh, when I was in the school, when I was in high school, um, I was very ambitious. When I was in high school, I was very a uh, rebellious, right? Or now uh, that I that I work, I am very pragmatic. Okay, so you can use all those expressions. You can describe yourself, or the turning point that made you change in the past. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Continue practicing. All right. Teacher, what yes. was the uh, the synonym of the uh, stubborn uh, adjective that you? I think that you use it. Uh -huh, stubborn. What? It's a uh -huh. person who never listens to others. Oh no, but I mean I I heard that you uh you use a synonym. Is that right? Or... Uh, maybe I did. Uh, let me see stubborn. Oh uh, head to head, I heard like head to head. Oh my heart like hard head, you know the yes. Hard head. Uh-huh. But you say What's stubborn. That? Stubborn mostly stubborn, right? So this is you know the, the word is a stubborn. Uh, a Hard person head. who never Hard listens. Head. Yes. Hard mm -hmm. head. All right. All okay. Right. I'm teacher. Oops. Sorry. Oh, teacher, I. I... I think we already we already finished. Okay, perfect. No problem. Yes, we're going back because uh we almost time. So we're going back to the to the main station. Okay, so here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so then uh, were you able to to share uh, with your classmates, other participants, your personality when you were younger? Yes. Okay, you know, this is unfortunately, obviously in, in one hour, we don't have like, you know, sufficient time or enough time to to practice more, right? 
So, but this is, for example, the, uh, let's say, a tip on how you can practice, okay, these kind of expressions to this. Now, you know, for example, the time clauses, uh, time clauses, you can use them to uh, express a moment in which an event happened or in a moment in which we had a turning point that we change or somebody else change or the life of a con the let's say yeah the, the life in a country also change right uh, for example you know what is happening now in the uh, in the gaza area right so this is another thing that happens so then uh, and also when you want to describe yourself okay a description of your personality Okay, so now I already have uh, taken part of the list, but just uh, I think we have 22 people, two are missing. Okay, uh, Francisco Antonio is here, right? Yes, yeah, uh, he's here. Giovanni Stanley. Yes, the I'm here too. <laughs> yes, no, I didn't see him. Huh. Hector Ivan is here too. Here right? too yes, Ivan Ibrahim, yes. Hello. Yes, he was the first one today in class. Okay, Joel, also Joel Emanuel Alfaro, right? So this one, where is Joel? Yes, he's here too. And Jorge Alberto? Present teacher. Yes, there you are. Okay, Jose Lino Alvarenga? I'm the kid. Oh, yes, there you are. Yeah, uh, Julio Cesar? Yes, Campos, right? Yes. Uh, Carla Salina? Then we have Carla in your microphone. So watch your microphone. Watch your microphone because. Present teacher. Okay, thank you. Uh, Carla Rene? Yes, she's here. Carla, you know, Carla Rene is very quiet, very calm since she was a teenager, right? That's what she said in the in the in the breakout room to her friends. Catherine okay. Lisbeth. Yes. Present. All right. Uh, Luis Eduardo. Yeah. Present teacher. Marlene Elizabeth. Marlene, Marlene. Yes. Men, and then we have Melissa. Melissa Present. Stephanie. Yes. Present. Michelle. Okay, Michelle is the one that didn't come yesterday. Michelle Beatriz. Neftali Antonio. Okay, he was here yesterday. Nefta, Neftali? No. Okay, uh, Oscar Alexander? Yes. Right. And Oscar Urdulio? Present. Yes, he's here too. Romeo Vladimir? Sarah, Romeo Vladimir? I saw you, Romeo. No. And Sarah Elisa? Present. Yes. Then Sophia Elizabeth also is here. Present. Wendy Paola is here too. Xiomara Violeta. Present. Present, teacher. Okay. And then we have Jenny. Jenny Carolina. Present, teacher. Ah, oh, there you are, Jenny. Okay, very good. Okay, so then uh, basically for tomorrow, we are going to have the continuation of uh, time clauses, but we finish tomorrow and tomorrow we begin with the uh, section two, right? Which is going to be a different topic. Okay, if you have any questions, remember I will be connecting tomorrow at 7.50. So you know that if you have uh, any questions or doubts about this uh, topic today, we can discuss during those, those 10 minutes. Okay, have a good night. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you for everything. Okay, thank you. Bye.